Hello everybody, um, this isn't really a lesson video, um, but I thought you guys might be interested in just kind of seeing um, what it's like to unpack my bag, see what kind of stuff I carry around with me on a daily basis. Uh, well, I guess nowadays I'm not really carrying a whole lot of stuff around with me as I'm not going outside much, but what I normally would be carrying around with me. Um, so I'm going to go through my stuff, unpack my trumpets, and show you guys some stuff that I have. Um, so first of all, this is my case right here. And I have this little bag hooked on the end of it, so we'll just set that aside for a minute. Um, if I can get it unhooked. There we go. We'll set that right over here. We'll get back to that in just a minute. Um, so, what, what do I have in here? In this large pocket, um, I can fit sheet music and stuff in here if I need to. I usually carry around an iPad. Um, and what this is great for is I can read oh, this page. I can read sheet music off my iPad. I can download music to it, and I can just carry tons and tons of music around on a nice slim device. So I find that to be very very convenient, uh, and I almost always have that with me wherever I'm going. In this pocket up here, I have three different kinds of lubricants for my trumpet. Um, I have this big bottle here, which is my valve oil, and then I have these two little bottles, which are different kinds of slide oil. I use one of them on like the, the main tuning slide, and then I use a different one for the first and third slides. Um, and I always keep those with me, because it's always important to be able to oil your valves and slides if you need to. Uh, then I have this black pouch here, which I keep mouthpieces in. Um, I have a bunch of different mouthpieces. I usually carry four in the pouch because um, it only fits four. Um, and this is my main mouthpiece. This is what I use almost almost all the time. This one is one that I've been trying out recently, but I'm not as big a fan of it. It's uh, just a different kind of mouthpiece. It does the same purpose, but I haven't been using it because I don't like it quite as much as this one. Um, and then these two... This is my piccolo trumpet mouthpiece. It's kind of tarnished on the outside, so I, I should probably polish that up. It doesn't really affect the playability, but I might want to clean it up. Um, then my piccolo trumpet mouthpiece. It's actually a mouthpiece. It's a cornet mouthpiece, but my piccolo trumpet uses the same mouthpiece as a cornet, so that's what I use. It's uh, very shallow. It's kind of a small mouthpiece for piccolo trumpet. Uh, and then... This is my uh, flugelhorn mouthpiece. You can s It's hard to see, but the, the cup is super, super deep. You can see like a trumpet mouthpiece. The cup is kind of shallow there. Like if I was to stick my finger as far in, that's, a, that's as far in as I can put my finger in that one. And this one, you can see my finger goes into the mouthpiece way farther. So it's a much, much deeper mouthpiece. Um, and you get a warmer sound out of that which is pretty interesting. So those are what I kind of carry around with me on a daily basis. Um, of course, I have my pencil. I use this mechanical pencil. It has a nice uh, twistable eraser so I can make notes and stuff. Although most of the time I'm doing stuff on my iPad, in which case I don't need the pencil, I can just make notes directly on that. Um, but if I do have sheet music, I always, I always like to have a pencil with me. Uh, and then a backup pencil for when my stand partner forgets theirs. Um, so yeah, that's basically everything that I carry as far as accessories go in my trumpet case. And I'm sure we haven't gotten to the main part, which are the actual trumpets. So let's get there. Um, I'll turn this around so you guys can see it. So when I open this up, I have two trumpets inside of here. Um, this is the trumpet that I play most of the time. Um, I have a, in the bell of this one I have that, and then I also have it in this one here. And what this is, some of you guys have probably seen this, seen me with this in class, is it's a stand. So it fits right in the bell, nice and compact, and I can unscrew the bottom portion here. And the legs fold out. And then I have a trumpet stand that I can set on the ground so I can prop my trumpet up if I need to do something. I don't have to leave it lying on the chair or someplace unstable. Love these stands. They're great. I've had this one for, 
I think about seven or eight years now. Um, they hold up super well, super sturdy. Uh, I feel like I'm advertising the product right now. <laughs> Uh, and I have this, I have another one for my other trumpet. Um, and you may be asking, why do you have two trumpets? And the answer is that they're actually different. Look at this. So if I take this one, and I take this one. Uh, I can't navigate the camera very well. If I hold them up next to each other, you can see the tuning slide on this one is shorter than this one. You see how this one's a lot shorter than this one? You see that? And what that does is it makes it play in a different key. So if I was to play, let me get a mouthpiece. Oh, I have one over here. If I was to play a C on this trumpet, it sounds like that. Whereas if I was to play a C on this trumpet, it sounds different, right? So I'm using the same fingering, but this trumpet is a whole step higher in pitch. So this trumpet is in B flat, as we are, so you know, trombones are in B flat, uh, trumpets are in B flat, clarinets are in B flat. Um, this trumpet is in C. So um, it plays differently, and that's the trumpet I use when I'm in orchestra. So in like most bands, in jazz band, I don't do a lot of jazz band, but if I, when I did play in jazz band, I'd use that one. If I play in like a concert band, or a brass ensemble, or a quintet, or anything like that, I'd use this trumpet most of the time. Um, but if I'm playing in an orchestra, I'm almost always using this trumpet. Um, and the reason for that is because the sound is a little bit different, um, and also you have a lot of transposing you have to do in orchestra, where um, the music's not always written in the right key for your instrument, so you have to change it in your head, and it's a lot easier to do oftentimes if you have a C trumpet. All right, so that's what I have in my main trumpet case. <clears throat> uh, and then I mentioned with mouthpieces, I had a uh, piccolo trumpet mouthpiece. Oops, I don't keep this one. I had a piccolo trumpet mouthpiece and a flugelhorn trumpet mouthpiece, or flugelhorn mouthpiece that I... Uh, kept in my case, and that's because I do have over here a piccolo trumpet and a flugelhorn. Um, this guy, super, super tiny, super cute, kind of like the baby of the of the trumpet family. Uh, it has four valves on it, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, um, which is pretty neat, and that's because it plays so high pitched. In order to play some of the lower notes, you need to press this fourth valve down to get down there. Um, and the it doesn't have a tuning slide you can see right here instead what you have is this lead pipe that comes out like this which is pretty interesting uh, and you know trumpets in the key of B flat uh, unless you have a C trumpet which is in the key of C piccolo trumpet um, right now it's in the key of A which is a little different it's kind of the, one of the only trumpets that you get in the key of A um, but I can also push this in and now it's in the key of B flat. So it's pretty cool that I can do that. Um, and it sounds high pitched and uh, a lot higher pitched than a normal trumpet. I can play something. Let me find my mouthpiece. Let's see, I'm gonna turn my mic down a little bit. practicing like all day today so I'm very tired and this trumpet is extremely difficult to play so I'm having trouble getting some of the high notes but um, you kind of get the gist of it it's, it's very high pitched it's a very uh, dainty instrument um, it's used a lot in like Baroque music if you guys are familiar with that like Bach and um, stuff from like the uh, 1700s used a lot in that kind of music and I love the sound of it uh, but it's definitely a very different sound. And then we have uh, our flugelhorn, which 
is like a trumpet. It's in B flat. It has the same kind of tuning mechanism as the piccolo trumpet where the lead pipe comes out like this. Um, and this one's kind of like a trumpet, but it sounds a little warmer. So... It's um, it's like a trumpet. It plays very similar to a trumpet. If you can play a trumpet, you can play a flugelhorn. Um, but it has a kind of a warmer, richer sound, which uh, it sounds nice in certain situations. If you have a jazz, if you know, like a jazz setting, um, a lot of jazz combos use flugelhorns. Um, and then there's various pieces of classical music which also use flugelhorn. But uh, yeah, it's just something that I got a good deal on it, and I've had it for quite a while. Um, it's a cool thing to have around. All right, and then the very last thing that I had, or not very last thing, I actually have a couple more things. I carry a lot of stuff around with me. Um, I have this bag here, which is my music. So if, I, if my music's not on the iPad, I have it here. Um, and I carry, you know, like etude books and like concertos, like solo pieces exercises lots of music in there i have then in this side some oh i don't have my like arvin's book but this is a big like uh uh orchestral excerpt book so yep i like to carry this around with me um if i'm going to like a gig or a performance i'd probably not, i probably don't have this but uh otherwise i probably have this with me depends um and then the final thing is this bag here that I set off to the side at the beginning and this is my mute bag so I have a Harman mute um, I don't know where my stem is there's uh, Harman mute and there's this stem which goes inside of it like this and you get two different sounds when you play I just realized I had my mic down low the whole time I hope you guys are able to hear me um, I was just showing off my music and uh, flugelhorn. I hope you guys are able to hear me. I'm sorry about that. This is a Harman mute. It sounds... I'll, I'll give you guys a little demonstration of what different mutes sound like here. Um, and I always carry around different mutes with me because you never know when you're going to need a mute. turn the mic down for these tests just so you can uh, hear it a little bit better um, so let me just go over I have a Harman mute it has a stem in it I can take the stem out of it and it sounds different I have a straight mute I have a cup mute and I could take the cup off of this to make it a straight mute but I don't really like the sound of it so I don't use it you can see this one's all dented up because I didn't treat it well um, but it sounds fine so I don't really doesn't mind I don't mind uh, and then I have a plunger, which I literally went to the dollar store and bought a toilet plunger and took the end off of it. And that's what this is for. Uh, or that's what this is. Uh, and then I have a little bag. And I will show you what I use all of these for right now. Straight mute. mute with the stem and then I can take the stem out of the Harman mute <laughs> And then I have a cut mute. And then I can close this. Actually, I can slide this up closer to the bell. Which 
sounds different. Um, I have this little bag here, so it just kind of makes it a little softer, so. And if I was to put the bag over the bell, Yeah, it just makes it a little bit softer. And then you have your plunger, which I, I don't use very often, but it's fun to have around. Just makes some kind of fun noises. Um, I don't play a lot of stuff with that uses it, but I have it around. Um, yeah, that's the mutes that I carry in my bag. I have a, this is a polishing cloth for my trumpet. Um, just to polish it and keep it up. Uh, and a deck of cards. Just to play around with when I have free time. It's fun to have a deck of cards. Yep, that's basically it. Alright guys. Thanks for sticking around. I hope this is interesting. See you later.